Hello motorcycle lovers, I recently purchased this 2006 Kawasaki Ninja 250 and I've been riding it for a couple months now and I thought it would be a good idea to make a review about it in case some of the newbies as well as seasoned motorcyclists are planning to buy one of these and considering it as a good option. So this is a 248cc twin engine parallel twin motorcycle it's a full-size motorcycle and it's great for beginners in my opinion but I have been riding for more than 25 years now and I have other motorcycles that are larger than this 750 600 and I am still enjoying this motorcycle a lot especially when I'm commuting to work which is only eight miles from my home and when I'm going shopping, light shopping, and where I have a backpack and I have to be on the city streets. That doesn't say that you cannot enjoy it on the highway either, because it can, it can easily get up to highway speeds. So this motorcycle is listed, I looked online, as 36 and in one source and 37 horsepower in the other one and that's the crankshaft horsepower and different sources list 26 and 28 horsepower at the rear wheel for it now this motorcycle is only 304 pounds that's 138 kilograms it's qu quite light in terms of fully fared motorcycles go and that 36 or 37 horsepower the engine has propels it pretty good there has been a test in the past, one of the earlier model, earlier models, and they listed it 0 to 60 time as 5.75 seconds. Now, just to give you a reference, cars like Golf GTI or Ford Focus ST, it's about on the same realm, around you know between five six seconds. So it's a, it has good, pretty good acceleration. The engine is a Revy engine. If you look here, it's just showing 13,000 RPM red line. And it's eager to rev. It doesn't have too much torque, too much power down there, but once you go up above you know, 6,000, it likes to be spun to high RPMs. It's a very fun motorcycle, and it has a very nice exhaust note as well. I don't know if you like twin exhaust notes I have been in my life always riding four-cylinder sport motorcycle inline fours and I'm starting to like this sound of the twin parallel twin it is very nimble and it comes from its low height as well as low weight it has 16 inch wheels front and back the front wheel is a 100 and the back is 130 and I think it's plenty for this motorcycle it has twin exhausts on both so one each, on each side so it gets one cylinder gets one exhaust and it has six speed transmission I would recommend this motorcycle mainly to the newbies who would like to learn without getting intimidated and also to people who are shorter maybe you know, shorter male or you know female riders who do not have too much power to you know just put it for example on the center stand the center stand which makes it also very nice you know lubing and cleaning the chain for example just to talk a little bit of its history the first version of this motorcycle the Ninja 250 came out back in 1986 so that that model was called EX 250E and it lasted two years, so 
8687. It wasn't as fully fared as this model. And then there was a big change, mostly cosmetic, when the ninja, the little, little ninja got fully fared. So the new model EX250F went from 1988 to 2007. In 2008, the new Ninja came out that was much more modern looking. However, there was one caveat. It had less power and it was about 22 pounds or 10 kilograms heavier than this little one. So in my opinion, this is a better motorcycle than the newer versions. I mean, I, I'm not talking about the, the newest ones where I think I be, they became um, injection, gas injection, fuel injection. But in terms of car carbureted mo models go, I think this is the best model and you can pick one up for quite inexpensively and easily find all the used or new parts for it. And it's all very easy to service by the way. Yeah, it's one of the big advantages. To give you an idea about its size, it is not as big as the other 600 or larger motorcycles. So I am 510. And when I sit on, it's quite comfortable. You can t see from my legs. They are just reaching very easily. And when I'm riding, they're in this like natural position. It's almost like sitting on a chair. So it's very comfortable. And if you look from the front, it'll from the front. The reach is very natural, so I'm slightly lean forward and it gives me a very comfortable position over long rides. So you can, someone at my height can easily ride it for a couple hours and without getting really tired. Very natural. And this, although this is little, the front fairing and the windscreen, it protects pretty good this section of the body and of course you get some wind into your helmet but it's not, not so much of a big deal. Unlike some other motorcycles, the mirrors keep pretty good view of the back so you are seeing your back and side quite well and they are easily adjustable. So I like it very much. This is my 12 year old son and he is going to demonstrate why this bike is good for shorter riders. He is 5'2". Okay, go ahead. So he can easily sit on it and then straighten it and he's not that heavy, he's still a lightweight. And both of his feet reach the ground very easily. This motorcycle's seat height is listed as 29.3 inches. So it's very comfortable. Both of his feet are on the ground and he can lean or he can also stand up and his reach is pretty good. So for shorter riders and also for leaner riders who do not wait much, this is an ideal motorcycle and it will perform better with someone who is not as heavy as I am. So if my son had a driver's license motorcycle endorsement, he will be flying on this thing. One thing this motorcycle doesn't like though is being cold. So it has been in the garage for a couple days. I haven't started up since like maybe five days now. And it's the engine is cold. And the way I started is with full choke. Let me show you. Full choke on. Neutral. So you can see it's not full choke, I decrease it a little bit and it likes to rev between 3 to 4 thousand rpm. If I decrease the choke too much, if it goes below 3 thousand, it doesn't want to stay there. So it's almost impossible to let it warm up below 3 thousand rpm. 
I'm going to decrease the choke a little more and you will see and it dies so when it's warming up the best thing you can do is set it to an RPM between three to four thousand and then try to keep it there just as it warms up it the RPM is going to go up so slightly decrease and in five minutes we'll be ready so I'm going to keep decreasing the choke in very small increments and you have to make sure it doesn't drop below 3000 otherwise it stops at least it's like that on my Ninja 250 and as it warms up the RPM start going up so I keep decreasing Now the engine is fully warmed up and the motorcycle is idling at 1200-1300 RPM, it's perfect. And I will show you the throttle response. And if you want to hear the sound, a nice twin sound now just to give you an idea how big this ninja motorcycle is right now it is next to my CBR 600 and you can probably clearly see the difference perhaps from this angle the ninja is much leaner as well as lower than the CBR but not worse looking on the street it looks quite sharp here is the Ninja 250 next to a 50cc Janme Agility scooter well for what it's worth it's definitely bigger than the scooter so don't think that this motorcycle is kind of like a scooter. No, it's a full-size motorcycle, but very user-friendly for lighter and shorter riders. Now what we are going to do is my son is going to help me to capture the Ninja 250 while it's in motion. <laughs> 